This video is brought to you by Factor. Everyone has at least one movie that they know of and nobody else in their friend group. You know what I mean? You're like chilling with your friends in person or on Discord, and everyone is trying to wow the other with their own respective absurd movie. Ah, yes, Trolland. Impressive. Very nice. But let's see Saber Sparks' movie. Look at that flat coloring, the tasteful, thick, furry girl. Oh my god. It even has a Viagra joke in it. For me, I have a private collection that I occasionally share with you all. Believe it or not, I actually have a few still up my sleeve, and you'll discover them in due time. But recently, I stumbled across a new edition, a film that is bizarre, mysterious, and completely unhinged, Animal Wars. Four. You can't even read. Three. Hey, read this. <laughs> this movie was suggested to me years ago by this lone viewer who obviously hated me, but I forgot about it until recently. So I decided to watch it on my Twitch with Rishi. By the way, I'm trying to bring back like the Let's Watch series I did, which like if you want to go check those out, they are now home on my highlights channel. Go sub to that. And I decided to restart the series officially with, you guessed it, Animal Wars. Figured that would be a good starting place, you know? Oh my God, I had no idea what caliber of chaos we were in store for. Wait, what? Excuse me? Whoa. <laughs> what the fuck are they? They're, they're... What are they saying? What are they saying here? Bonnie will be filmed with that. Put it on and keep it on. Wonder. Okay. Oh no, <laughs> they did not. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> yes, they did. Not again. All right, so, so one big burger. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Again, pure absurdity. And after doing a Let's Watch and a YouTube short about it, I decided to make this movie an honest woman and give it a proper review. Let's begin. Released in 2000 and hailing from the lands of Russia, uh, <laughs> that's all I really know. I'm not joking. I barely know anything about this movie. There's like barely any sources about it. The writers, the directors, the artists are all obscure to me, but that's probably due because like they're all Russian and I don't really watch Russian content so often. So eh, that might be on me folks. The studio behind Animal Wars was AFL Productions, which just has like the weirdest catalog of content that ranges from time traveling TV show dramas to, um, well, you know, apparently everything. Ah, oh, yes, the prized UFO slash mystic slash magic genre. Well, they got you beat there, Netflix. The studio itself has done a handful of animated shorts, but they're like very erratic in direction, both in visuals and writing. And also, I'm pretty sure that some of these shorts are just like straight up stolen from other companies. That looks like it's like Warner Brothers or Fleischer to me. Also, it's in English? <laughs> yeah. But Animal Wars is definitely the standout from their limited animation catalog and is unlike anything I've ever seen. It is Looney Tune slapstick plus pop culture references plus the soccer scene from Bed Knob and Broomsticks. That's the movie. You know, actually, no, there is one movie in particular I can somewhat compare Animal Wars to Animal Olympics. Yeah, I remember when I reviewed that like back in 2019. I was pleasantly surprised with how creative and charming it was. A variety of animals representing their respective countries as they compete in a furry version of the Olympics. Minks doing gymnastics, lions and goats participating in marathons, otters and orcas racing in a pool. What's it called in the, 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 the 100 dash? I used to swim competitively. And by that I meant I swam when I was like in sixth grade. It's like, okay, imagine an otter, but it's Michael Phelps. That's, that's the movie. Jokes aside, it was brilliant and was executed with genuine passion with a talented team of artists to bring the premise to life. It is one of my favorite pieces when it comes to demonstrating the power of anthro characters and how you can draw parallels between humans and the animal kingdom. The hopes of women around the world, one was kept. The way to beat Rene is to take a quick lead and break his concentration. But that begs the question. Why does Animal Wars somewhat remind me of Animal Olympics? 
well, the word animal is in the title of the movie. He's got anthro characters gathering to compete in a sporting event. The movies themselves aren't too well known. And that's about it. <laughs> in actuality, besides the premise of like anthro characters performing in sports, the two are as different as day and night. It's like Animal Wars came from the bizarre world and is the living antithesis of all the good that is Animal Olympics. <laughs> 4.5. Is that her score or the reading on the Richter scale? Fat ape, ugly oh. monkey, hairy freak! <laughs> <laughs> both similar and different at the exact same time. Now, Animal Olympics definitely leans into pop culture and makes references with its characters towards athletes and news reporters, but it does so in a charming way. But for Animal Wars, ho oh, ho ho, it is just a living shit post that has zero restraint when it comes to making references. You got Terminator, you got Rambo, you got Star Wars with the intro scroll, and it is in Hebrew for some reason. I, 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 the movie's a fever dream. It is a complete fever dream and absolutely unhinged. This movie even includes fake commercials ranging from slimy cheeseburgers to cheap beer. You know what they should be promoting? Factor. Actually, I think Factor is too good for this movie. One of my main goals for this year is to stop ordering out food all the time. I do it way too often and it's stupid expensive. Like I looked at my receipts last year and was like, Saber, you've got to start eating at home. But I'm also stupid busy. <laughs> busy making videos about growth pills for elephants, but busy nonetheless. But that's where Factor has my back. Factor has prep meals that are tailor made to my needs, which means a lot of meat and a lot of veggies for yours truly. Plus, they are fresh and never frozen. Literally, today, I was like, ah, dang, I don't know what I want for dinner. I don't have time to, like, make anything. And I walked downstairs, and I saw my factor delivery right outside my door. And I was like, yes, yes. And I totally destroyed two trays of queso fundido. Did I say that right? Fundido was fun for me to eat. I'll tell you that. Like, I didn't even record myself eating the grub for this video. I was just that hungry. I also love how much variety Factor includes with their meals, from Mexican to Italian to cartoon food. Okay, you got me. I made that last part up, but trust me, you don't want to eat the food from this movie. So head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code SABERSPARK50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That is, once again, Factor75.com. Or click the link below and use code SABERSPARK50 to get 50% off. I highly recommend Factor. Go hit him up today. And now, into the absurd furry abyss. So, what's the movie about? Well, it immediately starts off with references and goofs on 21st Century Fox and also makes a very obscure reference to a commercial for, of all things, Godzilla 1998. Like I was pointing at the screen while watching and was like, I, I know what that's from. I know that reference. I, I Wow, I can't believe they actually referenced this. Because when people think I want to reference Godzilla, they go, let's reference Godzilla 1998. Okay, I guess the rest of the Godzilla catalog isn't good enough. We then get a Star Wars scroll in Hebrew for some reason, though my dumb brain while watching it initially thought it was Russian. <laughs> yeah, I'm stupid. Don't look at me. So uh, I'm stupid. <laughs> it's Hebrew. Why is it Hebrew? The premise of the movie is about these two warring tribes, the Slashers and the Biters, and how they've been fighting for years for domination of their planet. However, both sides agree to settle their differences with a good old fashioned game of animal football. One that just ignores the rules and is essentially just a brawl. Orangutan dumps it off to Jet. The defense is all over him. Ooh, what a vicious hit! Ramjet knocks down the entire ah! secondary. The main character of the movie, main character, quote unquote, you can really even call him that since he doesn't really do that much except for like run from security guards. Well, the guy's name is Ed Bear. He's the star athlete of the slashers, but he gets framed early on in the movie for taking a bribe from the opposing team. 
The guy goes from being a beloved star with fans, a wife, and kids to getting completely dumped like his kid stepped on his foot. He gets thrown in jail, like sports jail, given a lie detector test where he's innocent. I guess they ignore that. They treat him like he's guilty. Uh, the guy then has a fever dream about being a, <laughs> a prison bitch, and then he decides, logically, to hang himself with a power cord from a computer with the security guards laughing at him. Fortunately for Ed, the support beam to the house breaks, and he escapes and is on the run from the guards for the rest of the movie. We'll come back to him here in a bit. In the meanwhile, we got these sports announcers. This big old bulldog who keeps saying rough, and then this annoying bird who constantly gets abused by said dog. You can only compare it to a Mac Burger. Huh? No. Not again. <laughs> the head coach of the Slashers is General Peppy from Star Fox. And the coach for the Biters is Andros. No, no, seriously, it's kind of uncanny and potentially deliberate, but who can say? Similarities, I see them. The teams run out on the field, beat up their own team members because why not? And then we see some mice cheerleaders who are clearly inspired, if not like traced over the great mouse detective. We then get this national anthem by the love child of the Cocoa Puffs bird and Foghorn Leghorn. And then the game begins. <laughs> which is just slapstick violence, wacky gags, cartoony physics, and a lot of violence. Like I said earlier, the movie does parodies of American commercials, which one in particular features actual humans, which is like kind of odd, considering it's a bunch of anthro characters that humans show up, they don't really explain it at all. They just show up and it's confusing, but I figure why even try? Why try to find any logic in this film? It's a fool's errand. We got more violence, more violence. Then there's more violence and more violence. Uh, Ed Bear is still running from the guards. This pig keeps getting his meals destroyed. There's... <laughs> What was that? No, seriously, what, what did I just see? What, what was that? I don't understand what I just saw, unless it's exactly what I think it is? Oh no, that's uncomfortable. And now like the Hebrew intro scroll is really uncomfortable. Oh, what were they trying to get at? Oh, that was un that was unnecessary. That was weird. Russia, stop it! Uh, good God, this movie is just unpredictability incarnate. There's then a Foxy News reporter with a super long neck for some reason. There's a T-Rex that looks like it's from the land before time that joins the biters. And then we get a commercial about growth enhancements, if you know what I mean. We then go back to Ed Bear. The guy somehow finds himself in the office of Coach Andros and realizes that he was framed and found proof. I guess the lie detector wasn't enough. Coach General Pepe realizes he made a mistake and lets Ed Bear back into the game. And then the team just proceeds to kick the living crap out of the T-Rex. They all just gang up on him. Like the entire slasher team is like, T-Rex, right now you're going to die. And then there's one final play that remains. And the slashers, with all their cunning and all their violence, make a final touchdown and win the game. The team celebrates, Ed Bear is vindicated, and the bird announcer tries to off himself in a variety of random ways for some reason too. That's really the, 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 the quote for this movie, for some reason. But here's the part that really threw me off. The movie had an after credit sequence where the Fox announcer girl is like wearing a sexy red dress and is singing. Also, her design looks very different from before, so I wonder if this scene was like an afterthought or a separate project. I, I don't know. It's, it, it almost seems like the characters in the movie are having a rap party for the animal actors or the athletes. It's, it's hard to say. But there's also this clip show of new scenes that like take place in the movie, but we're just now seeing them, of the fox girl helping out Ed Bear for some reason. I, 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 like she orchestrated everything. What? Why? Why'd she do that? Is she in cahoots? What's her motives? Just gonna stop asking questions and just enjoy these hip swivels. 
That's actually pretty well animated. I'll give him that. Don't look at me. Overall, Animal Wars was a hot mess of a movie that felt more like a poorly animated, poorly recorded, poorly written Looney Tunes gag that ran on for far too long. There was barely any substance to feel invested in, and the stakes of whoever wins gets to control the world never gave me a sense of tension or intrigue. But honestly, that's asking for too much for this movie. I shouldn't be expecting that level of competency from a movie that is essentially a satirical shitpost. But here's the thing. There is actual effort in this film. Like, someone cooked here. Yes, the character designs are wonky. The colors of the movie are flat. The shot compositions are hard to read at times. But there is a surprising amount of effort here. These characters are moving, emoting, making all kinds of facial expressions that took time and work to do. The animators for this movie could have phoned that in, but they didn't. They wanted wacky background characters in the bleachers in every shape and size you can imagine, right down to their mouths. Is this a bad movie? Yes, yes it is. But were there some animators who tried to make something lively and silly and put actual effort into their cursed creation? Well, I'll be damned. There was. But still, this is not a good film. And is more of a novelty and a train wreck, if anything. A train wreck you can show off to your friends and watch them cringe every second of the way. Godspeed to those who are brave enough to watch it. You have my respect and my growth enhancements.